Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and this is a continuation on a series here. I'm showing you um, an example of uh, using SketchUp to model and layout to create uh, printable, buildable plans. Uh, the plans I'm working on are, are for my stand-up desk. I've done a series of videos uh, on actually building the desk and showed you the finished product, and now I'm working on plans. So others who have requested can uh, purchase the plans and uh, download them and build the desk for themselves. So um, layout is part of the professional version of SketchUp. It's necessary if you're going to use SketchUp to produce plans. And uh, so here we are just to kind of show you where I'm at. Now I'm far from being done, but uh, this is page one. So here I just have a representative uh, look at the finished desk. And then I have my index. And this is a place saver. I have, I'll have i finalize these and the number of pages and what the pages will be called at the very end. It'll be kind of the last thing I do. But it is a placeholder. And uh, so if I move on to the second page, again, another placeholder. This is just a bunch of notes from uh, other plans I've done. And I may or may not even have this page. I'm doing lots of notes on each page. But I may have some general notes here. And then uh, this page I've shown before, but this is the layout of sort of a visual cut list to show you how to get it out of three pieces of plywood. And they're all numbered and these names will names and numbers will carry out through the whole plan. And, uh, and onward to the next page, which is the cut page. This page, I've used the same numbering system. Uh, I have... Um, put uh, dimensions. Uh, I've separated out uh, each section into the drawer and the desktop itself, the left base and the right base, putting all the notes on just one base size. I'm not going to waste uh, time or energy on the other because it'll be exactly the same, just you know, the opposite direction. And then some notes. Uh, I wanted to indicate one of the ways that I build, um, I don't get too worked up in uh, exact things uh, when I don't need to. Obviously, to build something, I want it to be very exacting, but the way I get there sometimes is different than some people work. And that is, I use um, parts and pieces as templates. So I've made an in, uh, indication in the note here. I've got this part of the desktop, the underside of the desktop, and the top side of the base. They will be connecting together, and the holes will need to line up perfectly. So I just indicate here, hey, here's the layout for the holes uh, on the underside of the desktop. Once you've got this done, then to simply take part 11, the top of the base, and center it front and back, top and bottom, and use these same holes so that there'll be perfect alignment rather than having dimensions on number 11 and then hoping that you lay out perfectly and it works. This way, um, you can, um, you know, have it work perfectly without spending more time measuring. So it's faster and more accurate. Same thing here with this angle. Um, I indicate first on part uh, 13 and 12, and there's uh, a 13 and 12 for the right side as well, to not bother about this angle. Now I've showed the angle of 99 degrees, but I only know that angle because I've measured it after the fact. Really what I uh, did was make the piece the proper length and the proper uh, width uh, for the widest part, so I made a rectangle, and then I just simply put a mark on the bottom to the width I wanted and drew, drew a straight line and made the cut. And so whatever angle it is, it doesn't really matter to me. I just wanted a certain width at the bottom, a certain width at the top. And then uh, the side piece that goes up this angle will have the small angle across the top to make it flat and across the bottom. Well, again, 99 degrees, we can you know, lay that out if we want, but it's much easier just to, once a 13 or 12 are made, and you only need to make one of them because you make one and it can be a, a, you can draw a line with the other piece to make that. And then once you have that, you can take uh, part 14, which is installed at an angle and just make it just a little bit longer, top and bottom, and then lay this piece alongside of it and make that little tick mark on the top and bottom. And you know, right, what angle it needs to be, just to set your saw to that angle and make the cut. So I'm making notes like that so people will have a better understanding. Again, like the, um, the uh, 
spacers for the casters. You've got the holes. Well, we don't really know what these holes need to be. I, I know what they are for my casters, but I didn't measure those. I just set the caster on one of these and um, made a mark and then was able to make the holes. And then once I had one done, I could do the other three. And then uh, these same holes need to be drilled into the bottom of the base, 16. And again, uh, you want them all to line up. So just use that same piece and use it as a template. So that's just a way to sort of get away from measuring everything and using templates uh, through the, you know, the build process. And now, so here's uh, what I'm going to do next. I, I've, you know, spent a fair amount of time getting the dimensions, putting the uh, parts in the right place, putting these boxes on, putting the notes on. So now I want to make, this is for the Imperial. I design Imperial, and so everything is dimensioned in Imperial. That way I will see if the dimensions are right. I'll recognize them right away if, uh, if this is 2 foot 5 and the inside is 2 foot, you know, four and i know these are one i know oh that's not right so i've got a problem so i know it's right by looking at it if i was doing it in the metric system since i don't uh, read that natively i might not pick up on that as quickly so i get everything right in my language in my mathematical language and then what i'll do is i will just simply um, copy this entire page or so drag from right to left everything that is intersected or you know see it turns blue then i will right click copy and i'll just right click and i'll paste but it's a lot quicker than me uh starting from scratch and so now i've got an identical copy uh, this one is for metric but you can see that everything is still imperial so what i'll do is i'll come through and i will uh, click on the first dimension and i'm going to hold down the shift key and just go through and grab all of these dimensions And I didn't want to waste a lot of uh, space dimensioning every piece. If there's uh, a number eight and another number eight, I'm just dimensioning the one. And then, um, so I'll go on. So I, I can just, I can select all of these through the whole model. But to save a little time, I'll show you uh, what I'm doing. I'll, I've got another screen here with my information on it. So now um, I've got these all uh, highlighted. So they're ready to be edited. And you can see that they're in uh, architectural. I will just take this to decimal and then I'll change it from inches to millimeters. And now all of those dimensions are changed to millimeters. Now the one downside to this is that those that work in millimeter most likely will make adjustments um, like 609.6. .6. I don't think uh, that's probably 610. Um, so had I designed it in uh, the metric system and understood that it would be the reverse it would be 610 and then in the inches i would just look at it and know oh you know i'm going to round this to you know um you know whatever that is equivalent to so that's the one downside for those that work in the metric system but most guys can kind of kind of figure that out and look at it and and you just know that every piece that lines up so 609.6 609.6 both of these will be adjusted to probably 610 603.5 i don't know if you'd adjust that to um uh 64 or 65 it depends on you know a millimeter, a millimeter is pretty small so anyway so i will go through now and uh finish um making all of these uh changes over to the metric and that'll, that'll uh, allow me to, um, you know, have dimensions that um, both uh, systems that are used around the world can be adjusted. And I see as I brought this in a couple of things, one other thing I point out here is like, so I've got a note here and that note is behind. So what I want to do is I want to select that note and I'm going to go right click and source of range or a range. I'm going to bring it forward and it, and you can see it didn't uh, come forward. It, I don't know how many layers there are. And so I can sit here and um, grab it and, and try that again, arrange, bring forward. And again, it still didn't come far enough forward. So what I can do a little, little easier. I don't, uh, I want to have this 
kind of on top of everything. So I'm going to right click, go to arrange and go bring to front. And that will just bring it on top of everything. So it, it depends on how many layers. You can really layer this stuff. And so if one thing is solid and it's over the top of another, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hide it. And that's the way the layers work in layout. And so um, I'm continuing on. I've got a lot more to do. I'm going to move this out of the way. But so I brought in an exploded view. I kept the same numbers just so that it can be looked at, just sort of a general idea of how it goes together. And I put some notes on indicating, um, you know, some, you know, some basic, you know, things that I thought of. Obviously, I can put more and more notes on. The, the goal here is to put enough on that it will help people that maybe need more help. But I don't want to go so much that it gets so busy it's overwhelming. Um, a lot of, obviously, to build something this complicated, um, most, most likely the people who want to do this will have some skills and some understanding. And then I've also done the videos um, of actually building this that can be watched as well as these videos um, where I'm sort of uh, talking through it. And then I've got another page just uh, focusing on the drawer, the exploded view of the drawer itself, some notes on that. I brought in just the part names just for the drawer and the materials. Just for the, these, are, these are replicated in the, in the overall uh, materials list. So you can go to the store with the main list and get the parts you need. But uh, as you're starting to look through how to put things together, this sort of separates them out. Again, some more notes and, and uh, just showing where the drawer fits. Just I think the more pictures... Um, the better. And then this page, I'm far from being done, but I'm going to do these flat views um, where I am showing the front, the back. I've dimensioned uh, this front with Imperial, and I think I'm going to make this instead of a back, I'm going to make it a front uh, metric and have a front Imperial and just show, like here, the overall height of the desk structure is three foot two, but the height of the caster is going to make you know the overall height um, different. So mine, for example, I think was like 41. Um, so it depends on the height of your caster. So I didn't want to put an overall height because uh, people around different states and different parts of the world are going to have different casters. But at least you've got the overall height of the structure and you know you can just add in the height of your caster to get your total height. And I'll do the same thing in metric. And then I'll have some other uh, views. The way I'm able to uh, bring these in is um, I'll just, uh, for example, here's a, mo you know, these are all the same model. They're just, you're just looking at different scenes. So if I grab this and I hold the option key, just like in SketchUp, and a lot of the controls are the same in layout and SketchUp. So once you learn them in one, you can use them in the other. So this will just make a copy of it. And then I can come in here and grab, I'll bring back over my panels. So if I go to um, my scene, you can see that I'm on the side view. Well, I can change this to, um, let's say, um, oh, let's just go with uh, drawer open view. And so it will change in the model to that view. And the other neat thing that you can do in um, layout is you can, so I've got this sort of portal that you can see the model through. If I click on it, you can see what it is. But if I want to do just a small little detail uh, to show, and start, you don't have to go and redraw that stuff. I can come in, I can grab any one of my shapes. So I'm going to grab a circle, and I'm going to um, draw a circle right here. And now if I take the get out of the circle tool, if I take my selection tool and I select the model and I select the circle and I right click, I can create a clipping mask. And what that does is it clips the model inside of this little window. And I can make this window uh, smaller, holding down the shift key to keep a perfect circle. I could make it, if I let go of the shift key, I could squash it down, make different shapes with it. But if I want to keep it a circle, and make it a different size I can do there. And then if I, of course it's, now if I go inside of it with the selection tool, go in the model, you can see the model shows, but I know it's only gonna show in the circle. So I can get in here and I wanna get in the model 
and I'm going to say move it around and say zoom it in. Then with the um, orbit tool, if I hold down the shift key, then it turns into a hand and I can get whatever I want to show in the circle. Well, as soon as I click outside of it, um, it closes that model and, and again there it lost the clipping mask, but I'm not sure why it did that, but I will come back in, shift click on both. They're both selected. You can see by them being blue, just like in SketchUp, and I'm going to create a clipping mask. And now you can see that, so you can, and then you can take these and move them around. And so if I wanted to have, you know, if I had a detail of the drawer and I wanted to just, you know, have one of those windows with an arrow pointing to show the detail. So that's a pretty handy tool. So just remember, you can take any of the shapes um, and you can then bring in a version of the model. It doesn't matter what version, because I can go and change this at any time in the future. It's a live connection to SketchUp. So if I go back into SketchUp, in fact, if I click on the model and I right click, um, so if I go into the model and I right click, I can open with SketchUp. I can come back into SketchUp to the uh, drawer open view, which was that view. And I can make edits in here and then when I go back to layout, I could come into that view. I can get into the model again, right click and just update the model reference. And so any changes I've made would then come through. So you can see SketchUp and layout are, are tied together uh, quite nicely. So anyway, I've got quite a bit more work to do. It does take a lot of time to um, build a set of plans. If you're building them for yourself, you can probably do them a lot quicker because you kind of know what you're doing. Um, I probably put more detail into these plans for others than I do in an entire house that I'm designing for myself to build because I know industry standards and I know what I'm trying to communicate. So, uh, but in this case, you know, there's a lot of different people from different languages and different parts of the world and different skill levels. And so just getting as much information without inundating you, it's kind of finding that sweet spot. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. I will um, end this video here. Hopefully you've picked up a few pointers and kind of understand what layout does. I'll probably do a final video when I'm done with the plans just to show that I'm done and introduce them. Well, if you like these videos on learning how to use technology and construction and remodeling and woodworking, uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up, you know, like the video, um, also uh, subscribe to the channel, and most important, uh, share with others. There's just so many videos on YouTube and they're hard to find the good ones. So if you think this is a good one, uh, share them with your friends and just people you know. Um, I'm, a, I'm an advocate, as you know, of freely sharing ideas. I get so much from uh, other um, you know, folks, other carpenters, particularly photographers where I spend most of my time on YouTube sharing their ideas. And so I just want to be a part of that group. And so if you, if you think these are helpful, share them with others. And if you want a set of my other plans, my workbench plans, uh, click on the link right here. And eventually when these plans are done, they'll be up there and available as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.